All right, welcome back. It is build time yet again. And this time it's going to be one tenth scale. We're going to go with a Red Cat Gen 8 Scout 2 Axe Edition. And then, of course, I'm going to pull off the Velcro and do magnets. And then I've got some graphics here. I've got some little details, some wipers, some door handles, gas caps to put on there. Antenna. Um, I want to do a little bit of paintwork detail to this. Um, I like the black, but I want to punch it up a little. So I got an extra decal sheet from Red Cat. And then I went ahead and got a spare tonneau cover because I know that'll get torn up, I'm sure. So not a lot. And then this is just the tire carrier mount uh, mirrors and stuff that came with the kit that's not installed yet. So not a ton to do on this. Uh, most of it's going to be stripping down the body to do a little paintwork and putting it all back together. All right, well, I jumped right back in. Uh, started on the magnets here to mount the body. As I was doing that, I looked at, uh, you know, this skid plate a little bit closer. And of course, I had to sandwich it between the fenders. You can see there, it's kind of creating a gap and kind of flexes these up just a hair so they don't sit perfectly flat. So, to remedy that, I pulled this uh, driver's side off, and then you can see with the Dremel, I'm basically taking a little bit out of there to allow for that bracket. So all this will sit down flush now. So, anyways, hopefully that'll get them flat, and then... Uh, let these guys fully cure on this side, and then I've got uh, a thought of how I'm going to do the body. Alright, that fender trim was the ticket. These are reinstalled, and you can see they're sitting right up against the frame and allowing for that little bracket uh, width. So the magnets on the fenders have cured up overnight, and you can see I've got my second uh, layer of magnets stacked, and I suggest doing this so you get polarity right. And I went ahead and marked with a little sharpie so I know the side that I'll be gluing uh, to the body. Um, see if I can peel this guy off. I'm gonna have to put some tape in there uh, when I actually do the body gluing process. But you can see I've got the body uh, upside down here and. I've got the Velcro removed and this is prepped. So I think I'm going to actually put the magnets and glue, you know, in these fenders by hand, um, just because they've got the slot. So it's pretty easy to align them and let them set for just a minute or two and then put it on and make sure it's centered and then flip it and let the weight of the chassis, you know, sit on here and compress it while it cures. Um, and since I'm painting, I, you know, this made it easy. I went ahead and took everything off so I could make this body basically a shelf now to set everything on. Um, so hopefully that will, you know, get it perfectly aligned. So I'm going to give this guy a, a shot and see. All right, we're back where we never want to be upside down. So the, uh, the chassis is on there, obviously, waiting uh, and letting everything cure. So the, I put the body <clears throat> magnets on there, you know, upside down, and got those all set. And then uh, let those sit for, you know, maybe 10 minutes. And then I got the chassis and slowly lowered that on. And uh, everything was going really well, except my back fender over here didn't seem as even as this one. And then I looked and realized the body had caught kind of half over the slider. So I kind of had to lift up this back chassis, tuck that in. So hopefully the glue is not all super messy right there. Um, so I'd recommend taking off the sliders, especially ones that come over the body look like that, because once you get that chassis so close to the body, it'll just pull itself down. So, um, yeah, that's something, again, I'll have to watch when I actually am mounting the body each time is to make sure those sides get captured and don't get kind of half caught. Um, but everything's centered up well. Um, luckily, my fenders on the body were very well aligned from the factory. 
I read a lot of people had issues on their, I guess, at least the first gen, gen 8s, uh, where they had to actually drill new holes and slide the front or the rear fenders forward or backwards to line up with the chassis. So luckily these were just pretty much money. And you can see there, we've got a really nice alignment. So hopefully that painter's tape will keep any overage from sticking and this will actually pull apart in, I don't know, 10, 12 hours. Better safe than sorry. I may just let this sit overnight for a good 24 hour cure before I try to rip it apart. But uh, that just leaves the body paintwork and some little details, some mirrors, handles, things like that. So it's coming along, almost there. A little bit of progress here. This thing's starting to look like uh, something out of Tron. So I got my kind of precision flexible masking on there and I'm going to fill it in with just plain old masking tape. But that allows me at least to get better lines. I'm not super good with cutting straight lines with a razor blade on these yet. So this flexible Tamiya tape is really, really easy to use. Uh, this is like three millimeter width and you can kind of flex it around curves as you can see. So I'm going to finish taping this up and then uh, we'll see what this looks like after it's painted. All right, I just wanted to kind of check in and show some progress on this body. Um, I guess you saw the paint work, but I started to get some of these metal emblems on and they're looking really sweet. And I uh, procrastinated, 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 and I got my vinyls on finally after doing a test application on another vehicle. I put some vinyl on uh, my 2021 Bronco. Um, Kind of to test and get uh, a technique so i ended up using the hinge technique so this has a backer and it's got a front transfer clear uh, peel off piece so you can you know basically hold it up to the body and then i taped each end onto the body you know and measured from a point to get it straight and then you tape a hinge piece this tape across the middle and you can take off tape on one end, peel it back, peel the back or cut it while you're holding the transfer and then lay it smooth, you know, half of it. And then, you know, untape this end, peel it back, repeat. And look at that. I mean, really smooth. Of course, I just got some like oily fingerprints on it. So I've got the, the gloss vinyl over the mat. And then here it is on the hood but it looks really sweet. You got the interior decals. The interior looks much better, not shiny. That flat coat looks great. So anyways, I'm gonna keep progressing here and see if I can't get this fully back. Oh, another thing I'll say is I uh, did, you know, you can see I put a few screws. I found it easier to get the body uh, braced while I was applying these side decals so it's not floppy. Um, but you, you know, you don't want the fenders on because you want that vinyl to go under the fender flares. So just secure it on with a few screws. That way you've got something, you know, stiff to work with while you're applying that. All right, got a little update here. Starting to get some scale details on. Um, you can see I got the mirror marked in and I've got the door handles marked. Um, so this is the assembly that comes with the ax. Uh, two screws, you've got the swivel handle, the mirror itself, and then the backing plate. Um, they don't tell you anything about that, you just kind of have to figure that out from the parts bag, but it's not that hard. And then this is the Club 5 racing handles painted up. Um, 
This is my method to blind mount these since the body is not clear. Um, just made a little template here. Um, and that's what I used, um, as you can see, to mark that. Made it super easy um, to locate it and measure it on each side. And then those will uh, pin mount uh, from the rear if I can get my fingers up there. I'm worried about that since this has the interior and the door panel. Uh, it's a tight fit right there, um, but I think it'll work. So uh, what else here? Oh, I've got the uh, rear high lift mounts. Um, these are little 3D printed mounts here for the RC four wheel drive high lift. Um, I think the seller makes them for the hood, you know, for a JK or something hood mounts, but. You can really put it anywhere, obviously. And then uh, one other thing that I've gone ahead and done is glued in some little magnets. Um, I've got some gear that's magnetically mounted. So that works out well. I just glued some in here so those can come on and off really easily. And then there's no marks, no holes, bed's clean. Um, so that's the progress here. So hopefully I can get these handles on and not uh, totally ruin this thing. Well, look at that. So those went in without a problem. They pinned from the back side okay. Um, I was able to just get them started with tweezers and then push them through slowly by hand. And they're snug with that pin. And I'm going to wait on the mirrors until I get the cage back on. So I came back here to the gas caps. And it comes with three options. This is again from Club 5. Um, so I think I'm going to go with this more traditional, smoother. Uh, this one's pretty sweet. But they're interchangeable, so I could always change my mind and put a different on later. So this is what I did here. I just got that over, of course, the indent there. You know, found the home, trace a circle, and then I could come back and kind of push this in, hold it, and start the screws, at least through the tape. And then I took one screw and screwed it through, you know, in the four spots, and then pulled the tape, and that's what we're left with. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that gas cap on and we are going to move to the windshield back there and get the wipers on that are also from Club 5. All right, got a little update here. Got my wipers clipped out with a sprue and uh, I almost forgot about my little um, fire stick antenna that I got from a seller off of eBay a while back. I used a longer version on a different build but these are really nice. Um, I got a little nut, a um, little O-ring that acts as a lock washer and it also provides a little more flex at that joint, which is good. Um, so I'm going to mount it right here behind the fender well. Um, so the hope that it doesn't stick up too much past the uh, upper cage, just so it's kind of protected on a rollover. Um, you can see I've got some of the interior in. Got the front grill back in, um, minus the lights. But this thing is starting to take shape here. Um, so I don't think I want to mount this yet now that I've got it fitted. I'm going to put the cage on the windshield and get these little finishing bits on. All right, this gives you a pretty good vantage underneath here. Um, you can see the, the gas cap screws and uh, you can see I use servo uh, horns to back up those high lift mounts and to back up my license plate that I've got on there. Um, there's the hole for the antenna and uh, see the handles there and then I haven't got the mirrors on yet but uh, well, I'm not going to show you the plate yet. I'll, I'll make you wait. You can you can try to guess and see what that license plate is. All right. 
We've got windshield wipers. Look at that. Those went on super easy. Um, just used a reamer and went really slow and uh, just waited till I could friction fit those in. So those are in there super tight. So I don't have any glue or anything um, behind those on the dash or anything. Um, so the pegs just poke through. So you could actually, you know, turn them on in the rain. <laughs> or at least prop them differently if you want to. So that's kind of cool. Um, so anyways, I'm going to get on to the lights in this uh, body shell. Well, I thought this would be a good opportunity to jump into the MyTrick RC light kit. Since I've got the inner fenders off of the body, uh, that will allow me to uh, get all these in the light pods and put those in before I put the inner fenders in. Um, so let's just look at the kit here, um, what it comes with. So you get the controller, obviously. Um, you get installation, zip ties, and mounting squares. Then you get uh, a 9 volt battery lead, I guess, to test with if you don't want to hook it to the truck. <clears throat> this is your pigtail from the chassis lights, the bumpers. So you've got one plug from those to your controller, which will be on the body. Uh, it comes with a little Y harness. Then you've got your uh, orange strands for the front bumper. You've got uh, two duals for the front headlights. And you've got brake lights, duals, uh, and you've got a reverse light on each side, so just one, one of those. And you've got dual brakes, and that makes up this pod. And you've got uh, a brake light on each side of the rear bumper. And then these are the clips that come with the axe and the screws. Um, so I'll just have to figure out what screws to use. There's some different links. Um, hopefully it should be pretty easy to understand, but uh, I mean this is a little separate Y cable that you have to buy if you want to control it on and off with a third channel, which obviously I do want it switchable, so I got that little cable. So anyways, I'm going to get the body side, I guess, uh, plugged into these pods and screwed in and mounted in and then uh, be able to kind of reassemble the whole body. And then we can look at putting these into the uh, chassis on the bumpers. Okay, got these ready to pop in the body. Got two reds. So you can take a single strand to one light, and then you've got to split a strand for the reverse. And take one light to each. Um, Make sure you've got them oriented right with the, the smaller brake light to the bottom and all the screws to the inside. Um, and then the headlights, of course, you take one strand to each. I've got two lights in them, so that looks all ready to go. So let's get that put in. All right, got the light pods screwed in, as you can see. Got everything kind of taped in place. Right now, I just wanted to test fit it and make sure it could all route underneath these inner fenders. And you can see on the front pods, I had to bend the LED uh, ends downward uh, because those, those inner fenders come in pretty close to the front, so those will now tuck down and everything can route under those two guys. So then I can just, you know, since they have magnets on them now, I can pop these on the chassis uh, and then flip the body, screw it back onto the fender flares so that's fully reassembled. Um, then I'll come back to tidy up these wires and place the actual controller in its home on the body. Uh, just a quick shot here before I get the fenders on. Looks so good. If I didn't, if I had to put this vinyl on, stopping short, um, I might run it without the fenders. That really looks good. I like the kind of square fender look there. But uh, I've got these ready, so I guess I'll throw them on. Oh, I also got the collapsible mirrors on there that it came with. Those are very nice. Um, so it's just lacking the antenna, and it will have all the gear screwed on there. 
All right, got the fenders on the body, so I jumped over here to the chassis side to uh, start working on these bumper lights, and I pulled open the receiver box, which is kind of neat here. They use little servo extensions from the receiver to these little side harnesses. That way you can plug and unplug items freely. So luckily I've got kind of an assortment of servo extensions. So I've got this little tiny one and then uh, I'll run it to one of these free harnesses and that'll be my channel 3 switch that goes to the lighting controller and then the other interface will be I believe with the motor um, and they tell you for that switch you need a Y cable which you don't you just need a servo extension you, you in any configuration they have in their instructions you do not use the other end of the Y cable, so it's pointless. Maybe it's just they only sell Y cables, but you know, if you wanted to add something later, you'd have an extra always powered port, or I guess you could put in a diode and maybe have another switch that you control with that third channel, but just use the servo extension if you're not running anything extra. Well, I may have spoken too soon. Um, the reason they want you to use a Y splitter is because you're going to end up needing uh, this male plug, which is also typically on this end. So if you have a normal servo extension, you're going to have a male and female end. So that's the deal. You could always cut off one, you know, and solder together your own and not use a Y splitter. Um, so this is the other one, and this one actually will go into the receiver, then the motor will go into this one, then this will go up to the um, controller. So these two are going to go to the controller, and we'll just have an open end here for this uh, channel that's going to control the switch. Look at that. Switchable lighting. So of course I had to plug in the controller just to test it, make sure everything was working and I didn't make any crazy errors here. But I'll show you kind of the tail light here. So slow reverse, you don't get the reverse light. There you go, you gotta have to get up to a little bit of speed. And then if you let them sit idle for 30 seconds, the headlights turn off and the taillights start flashing. Go into kind of a hazards mode, which is cool. So, now I've gotta get back to the chassis and put those bumper lights in. All right, everything is tidied up tucked away on this body shell. I love these little zip tie clips that it comes with. This is my little extra piece here. It's just an extra out I just tucked under there. It comes off of that so if you had another light you could have an always on. Well, I've got the uh, flashers going now. I've let it sit here for a second. You can see the chassis, got the bumper lights in. I had some pretty thick uh, shrink wrap, so I kind of used that to just kind of black out uh, any exposed wires. And I used some of that without shrinking it just to kind of protect them, run them through the motor. And the same thing here, I tucked it through between the shock tower and the fender well and used some shrink tube. That way you don't see the red and black wires kind of looking through the fender well and of course I did the same here at the rear shrink wrap those up so that's all tucked away and then I added uh, an extension so I got a little more length because I like a little more length on these whips um, and then instead of unplugging everything here I can just unplug right here and leave the controller plugged in since those are 
at least that one light and a lot smaller plug. So anyways, all of that should tuck in kind of right here. Um, and it, I've test fit it, it seems like there's plenty of room on there. But uh, now there's just getting a few little details on there. A um, couple more little metal emblems, some more decals, and those little scale bits, and this will wrap it up. All right, well, you know what this means. We are at the end. So all the decals are on, all the final little metal emblems, got all the gear in. So we're going to give it a final weigh in here without the battery. Let's see where we ended up. Not too bad, 54.46, and I forgot to weigh it after the stage one, which was all the brass on the front, but I will put the stock weight up on the screen so we can compare. So we are 4,096 grams, let me flip over to ounces. 144.5 ounces so looks like it could use potentially a little more front axle weight maybe a brass diff um, brass steering links but something up there potentially to get a little bit closer to 60 40 but without getting it out and driving it it's hard to say so let me throw the battery in there and see uh, where that'll have us sitting Okay, here we are with the battery installed, and I believe this is the same battery I tested with uh, last stage for the weigh-in. So we gained a little weight, but because that battery is so centrally located, we kept the same 54-46 ratio. So 43-54, let's flip over to ounces. One fifty three point six. So not bad. So we've got a little front ratio bias. Um, could potentially use a little more, but I'll just have to see and tweak that as I go. But I'm happy with this.